All right, this is a quick demo on doing some titles uh, using three programs. We're going to use uh, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, and Adobe After Effects. And so, uh, as we put this together, we're just going to like kind of stack some stuff up. And I'm going to try to cover some things. Now, the text I've already got in place, and uh, I've got them all in the same place because that's where they're going to be when I run the titles in my sequence. Now, this image of Kermit is going to show up also, uh, but we're going to work with one thing at a time. And one of the things I want to do is I want to apply some uh, texture to my text. So I'm going to move this around a little bit. As you can see, my smart guides are showing up, trying to place things where they should be. So I'm going left and right. I'm going to get that position there for vertical. And that pink bar shows up. And I'm going to hold down shift and go left and right until I find the middle there. And I think that's about it right there. So that should be the middle. And it uh, looks pretty good. So. Um, what I want to do is I want to apply some texture to this and I'm going to go to my FX button on that layer for Kermwick select and choose FX and I'm going to try some um, I'm going to try some uh, bevel and emboss and I'm going to use this to try to apply a shape to it so you can see the edges have already gotten some shape to it I can build more depth into it and it looks kind of chrome a little bit and that's kind of nice uh, go with the size and that's going to build the size of the, the edges a little bit softening it or hardening the edge uh, and I can change and I'm working here you can't really see what I'm doing there but I'm working with inner bevel and look working with these settings uh, for this effect so if I try uh, outer bevel and I try with a chisel hard that gets a little more intensity just a little more than I want actually so I'm just going to experiment with this and you can try things out until you like what you see uh, one thing I'm also going to do with this is I'm going to apply a drop shadow. So if I choose FX again, I think, and here's my drop. Oop, I missed. I did not want that one. I want the drop shadow. So there's drop shadow. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to apply. I'm just going to try something out. This is something I do quite a bit with text. Is I'll add some texture to it by adding a layer. And this new layer is going to include. Let me set this to back to black and white here in my colors. And I'm going to choose filter and render and clouds. And so the clouds um, came out and actually scaled up a bit more than I want them to, but I'm going to choose filter and noise and add noise. It's going to get some grain and some texture going. And I always choose, mon choose monochromatic here and I can choose the size of the grain a little bit here. And as you can see it still has some, some of those clouds visible in there and uh, I can be pretty happy with that. So what I want to do with that is uh, go back to my Kermit layer where my text is and I'm going to use uh, the magic wand tool. I'm not always sure where it is, but I think it's right there. There we go. So I'm going to choose this. I'm going to make sure I choose uh, not all layers. And uh, let's see if that works. I'm trying to make sure I select everything on this layer. It's not working. I think I got the wrong tool. Quick selection tool. No. I want magic wand. There it is. I missed twice. So now <laughs> I've got all the areas inside select. Now I missed inside the R. So I'm going to choose uh, non-contiguous, and now I've got inside all my shapes and nothing's missing. So going back up to this layer, uh, probably not a bad, bad idea if I duplicate this layer, because I might use it again for uh, the Giggly Dickens part here. So I'm going to use that part there, and I'm going to use this with that selection. I'm now going to uh, choose the Quick Mask or Layer Mask tool, and let's see if that did what I wanted. Uh, I think it didn't. Let's see go back a few steps window history and the thing I made a mistake on there let me back up a couple times layer mask layer order there we go so I'm just going to stash this aside so I'm going to turn off this other um, layer of, of clouds and choose the mask and as you can see it cut out the part I wanted and not the other part so I'm going to reverse or invert my selection and now it's going to do what I want so I got this and now I've got that nice texture on there. So that's something I can work with a little bit. A uh, good um, blend mode for that is multiply. And then I can work with the opacity. And really a good idea would be just to work your way through this column of different um, blend modes to see what looks best in the context you're after. So that looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to want to apply the same thing to this other text. So I'm going to go down here to Giggly Dickens Film. Turn it back on again. I'm going to turn this one off and this one off. So I've got two layers that work for me on that piece there and I want to make sure they stay stuck together so choosing this one I'm again going to use the magic wand tool and I'm going to set the uh, contiguous off 
and make sure I'm on the same layer. I'm going to invert the selection, go back to my clouds layer, and this is again, this is a separate copy of clouds. So if I then choose uh, layer mask here, I've now got that nice texture applied to it, and uh, going back to this layer here, I can actually right click and choose uh, what's in here somewhere. I know it is there's copy layer style and coming back to this layer here, right click and paste layer style. And I can't see it yet, so let's go back to this. And sometimes where you click or right click has a lot to do with what you see. So that's something you have to kind of keep keep in the back of your mind as you work with this. So I'm trying to find uh, paste layer style. I'm sure it's, there it is. So now I've got that layer style copied in there. Um, I may, oops, I think I applied it to the wrong thing. I sure did. So I'm going to undo that and apply it to the layer I'm supposed to apply it to. So there's this one. And let's, there it is, paste layer style. And so then I've got this layer here. And I can reduce the intensity of that by dragging down the opacity. But I definitely want to turn to multiply or whatever I do up here. This one here is difference. So I want to give them the same effect. So I'm going to shut those off, go back to this one. Uh, set this to difference. Looks pretty good. And I can mess around with the opacity a little bit just to get more of a feel from that that I'm after. And that makes it a little, little bit more interesting uh, to look at. Now what I need to do to make these come into uh, After Effects with me is I'm going to select both these layers. So shift and click. I'm going to right click and I'm going to uh, uh, link layers. I could link layers. That would work pretty well. But I want to go ahead and um, merge these two together. And this is in here somewhere with merge. Let's see. Let's try it again. Um, there it is. Merge layers. Also merge layers you can find in the layer panel. Probably take me as long to find it there as it did in the other menu. But it's definitely here somewhere. <laughs> I know for a fact it is. Uh, yeah, we're not sure. So I'm just going to come back here. And I found merge layers right here. So those are now one piece. They're not going to come apart. Let's do the same with these two layers. And that way it'll simplify things when I get it over to uh, After Effects to work with this, this style. So again, merge layers. So now it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy. I want to make sure I include Kermit. Now, before I wrap this up, I want to get Kermit so I just have his profile and not, uh, not the rest of the picture. So I'm going to use uh, the mm, Quick Selection tool. You can actually skip that and go Select and use Selected Mask. You have to have the layer selected, which I did not. And select and mask is what I'm looking for here. It opens up a separate window, a separate interface. And we're just going to choose select subject. And Kermit is so legendary that even Photoshop knows that that's Kermit right there. So we've got that selected. And uh, I like to use uh, the overlay mode here. And I hope I got that right. Let me try this. So if I click OK, now it's got this reduced. And I've got all the pieces I want to bring in. Now the background layer I could leave on and just not choose to import it when I get there later. But uh, let's go and leave it, I guess. But I did that so I'd have a background color that was close to what I was working with in my layer development. So let's now go to Premiere and uh, build a project there. So I've got some footage in my project, and I can double click on these, as you know, and double check them in the source panel and kind of trim them down here if I want to. I just drag this one right over here and I'm just going to trim this to what I want. So I'm going to go from the slate that they used in this project to here and I'm going to zoom in here and uh, let's see if I can take back this up a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to start here. And this is not actually the part that I want to show you but I want to make sure that we talk about how to do some editing and talk about how to go from Premiere to After Effects. So I'm actually going to move this over and I'm going to right click here and I'm going to choose new item black video and the purpose of this black video is to be a placeholder for a little while so if I drag this over into place and I decide how long, how long I want that to be so I'm going to right click and choose uh, let me think I've got two pieces of text your text should appear on the screen long enough to read it twice for the average reader so I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, temporarily I'm just going to go with uh, or speed duration I'm going to set this to 14 seconds Kind of a wild guess. I'm not really sure I should be using that amount, but we'll see how it goes. Now, usually we use 1920 by 1080, and this project was shot at something different, so the sequence is shot and is therefore different. So, what I'm going to do is then replace that black video with something in After Effects, and because I've got uh, these three pretty heavy duty um, 
uh, programs open. I'm going to close my Photoshop so that my machine can work a little bit more sanely. So I'm just going to save this um, and save on my computer. And I'm just going to call this Kermoy Title. And it's a Photoshop document. And now that's saved and Photoshop is closed. So so now my program is going to work a little bit better. Now I already have After Effects open. Not a bad idea if we uh, go ahead and file save as this before I get going too far. And your entire project for Premiere and After Effects should like refer to the same piece. So I'm going to put this in the same place. And we call this Kermit Titles. And uh, oops, let's go to this one. That didn't work out. I clicked the wrong thing. Kermoy title, but I'm going to take out the PSD part. There we go. So save. So now uh, all the all the titles I'm going to do for this project will show up here, whether they're the titles or special effects or whatever. So coming back to Premiere, I'm going to right click on this clip, and if you have multiple clips you're working with in several layers, you can use those as well. Uh, but I'm just going to use this for now. Replace with After Effects composition. Go to After Effects and there it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave the black video in place. I may replace it with something else later. But I want to go to my folder where my titles are and I'm going to grab the Premiere project, excuse me, the Photoshop project. PSD, yes. There are so many of these. So I'm going to change this into a composition. Um, so when I do this, it's going to have editable layer styles, merge layer styles into footage. I'm going to choose the merge styles into footage. And then I'm going to say OK. Now there was one layer that I don't really want in there, and that was the black video, the background. So I'm just going to get delete that one. And uh, it looks like I've got my caps lock on, so that's going to go away. So here's what I want to have. Now there's several pieces going on here, and what I want to do is hide the picture for now. Good idea if I name these layers. It's probably always a smart idea. I'm going to skip that for now in the interest of time. And I'm going to start with this piece here, Giggly Dickens Film. So I'm going to stack that at the top, just for my organization sense. I'm putting that on the top layer, and I'm going to reduce its duration to six and a half seconds. I don't know, somewhere in there. Move it over, and it's going to fade in. So now I've got the Google Dickens film, and then we're going to follow it up with uh, the Kermwick. Now it looks like I double clicked. Sometimes I'll think I should be able to see something, and if you double click on any layer, you wind up in that layer. So I'm going to close those and come back to the title. And now I should see this. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to keep that one actually up the whole time. Maybe move it over a little bit more. Maybe stretch this one out a bit more. So I'm going to fade those into each other. And then I've got Kermit. Kermit's going to show up here. And we got this. So the whole thing shows up. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my um, Opacity, so T for opacity, because opacity starts with T, and opens those up. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, move in a little bit. So I'm, I really want to do this mathematically. That's one second, and I'm going to set my opacity there to 100. Back it off a little bit, and um, I actually didn't want to do all three of those at once. I just want to do this one layer. So I don't know if you saw that, but it changed all of them. So it added a keyframe to everything. So there's this keyframe here back it off and change the value to zero. Here's a cool trick. If you copy and paste these keyframes, copy, paste, you can then right click and choose keyframe assistant and time reverse keyframes. That makes things a little quicker and easier when you're doing that. And you can actually copy those between layers. So I'm going to go to this layer to here and paste and now it's going to fade in and I'm going to paste again here time reverse keyframes and now I've got that one at the end for my titles. Now the piece that's missing here of course we fade this and it fades out. You could overlap these if you want to. That makes it kind of fun. And what I gotta do now is get Kermit the Frog in there. So Kermit or Kermwick in this film is the star of the show. Um, a gangster in the style of John Wick uh, in a film produced by Giggly Dickens, a film crew in Hall Street, California. So I'm going to get the size of this right first. So I'm going to choose this layer, choose scale. Um, I'm going to scale something like this. And what I'm going to do is use a mask. 
and I'm going to keep Kermit behind there. And the mask, if you have a layer selected and you choose the shape layer, the shape tool, it's going to make a mask. If you don't have a layer selected and you choose the mask tool, it's going to make a mask layer, a shape layer. So I'm going to select that layer and I want this to appear something like this. So as you can see, it masks out Kermit the Frog. And I've got a mask on there. So now I can take Kermit and uh, go to position. Let's uh, move him up. So I've got that happening there. Now what I didn't like about that is the fact that the mask moved with me. Not quite what I'm after. So I'm just going to start that there and uh, call that being my... Let's bring him up real slow and mysterious-like. So position there is going to have the keyframe. And I'm going to come back here. It's probably a huge amount of time. It's probably going slower than I think. And bring it back down. And positive direction is down. And there's that. Now i got to fix the mask. So i got to find the mask. And that is opening this and moving down. There's masks. And I can work with the mask path and the mask feathering. First thing I'm going to do is the feathering. So I'm going to like just kind of blur that edge of the mask. Let's hide temporarily these other two layers. So I want to see that edge. And you can see the feathering is this way. Um, and I could invert this the other way. Nope, that's not what I want. Let's try the mask feathering is the other way. Let's try this way. Nope, it's got to be positive. So I've got this. And um, trying some things out. Mask expansion this way. Okay, that's what I want right there. Now this mask has to not move with us. It needs to stay put. So bring in back my layer for that. I want it to show up at the top. So here's this. I'm going to go to mask path and click the keyframe. And I'm going to move back here and I want to select that entire mask and bring it down I think. So let's just uh, move this up. Let's I guess select those two points and bring those up. That's great. And so now <laughs> Of course, it didn't do what I wanted. You know, what I should have done there is had a keyframe for the mask path. That's what I forgot. So moving forward now, I can grab those points. And so now, let's move this over. So it's all about timing. It's about experimenting and see what works and trying things out and stuff like that. So that's that's kind of how this works out. Now if I go back to Premiere, of course, we're going to find that it has all done the work. It's connected, supposedly. Let's go back and save it. Control S <coughs> and Premiere. Well, it should show it, and for today it's not doing the thing it's supposed to do. Normally it does. So normally they're connected and hot linked together. All right, that's a demonstration that somebody asked for, and I hope that works and helps out. You could, of course, go back into that After Effects thing just for fun. Let's add a layer of, of clouds. So I'm going to add a layer, layer, new, solid. Color doesn't matter at all. And I'm going to add a uh, fractal noise layer. And fractal noise, if I take this and drag this over, I got that. That's kind of interesting. Uh, it didn't really look the way I expected it to. What I want to do with this is set the um, blend mode to multiply, I think, and or some other possibly difference, something else that's going to make this work well. And I want to turn that title uh, sort of, I'm going to push T for transparency or opacity or whatever that is. And here's how I get that churning as a, as a, as a piece. So I've got this at the zero. I'm going to set my evolution keyframe here. I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to uh, change the value here. Let's go to like three rotations or four rotations. So now those clouds are kind of churning as our clouds show up. And now we got this and that kind of creates sort of some more interest and intrigue to the piece. And there you go. Hope you had fun with that one. I did.